Welcome to a game for your thoughts. Today we're talking about Bioshock. Bioshock came out about, oh, 2007 and is considered one of the greatest. Bioshock is highly revealed and it's really praised for its storytelling, atmosphere, gameplay, all that good stuff. So I'm really, really excited to talk about this one. So let's talk about it. So the story of Bioshock follows this guy named Jack and he crash lands in a plane in the Atlantic Ocean. He comes across this lighthouse or this light tower and he goes into the light tower and it takes him he gets in like the submarine and takes him underneath the ocean to this place called Rapture. It was an underwater city by built by a man named Andrew Ryan. And Andrew Ryan had this great idea of just letting everyone just be free and not have to worry about ethical limitations and things like that. But these ethical limitations ended up being the downfall of Rapture along with a gangster or smuggler named Frank Fontaine. And when you get to Rapture, you find it is not the awesome place that it is meant to be. It is a total just mess. There is just things everywhere that's like that shouldn't be there. They're just The people are super just like spliced up. They're called splicers. They're just crazy. And everyone's basically trying to kill you except for a man named Atlas who guides you through a radio as you make your way through Rapture and try to get to Andrew Ryan and find a way to get back home. First off, I want to talk about the story of Bioshock because the story of Bioshock is incredible. It's seriously one of the greatest stories in video games. The beginning part does a fantastic job of building this world and I think that's one of the best things Bioshock excels at is at its world building and its storytelling. It does a fantastic job of using the environment to its advantage. It takes the environment and tells really cool stories. You've come across people in hallways and there's things littered about the place that kind of tell the story. And then also as you go along you find audio logs that you can pick up and listen to stories and kind of hear people's thoughts in certain situations or even come across a dead body and figure out how that body got there and what their story is. It's a fantastic game of world building and storytelling and it does a fantastic job of really getting you invested into the world of Rapture. The city of Rapture is a fantastic place to explore. There's so much to see, the different environments goes along with kind of the gameplay and the graphics and stuff like that, but for the storytelling aspect, it does a great job. Each place has its own stories. Every location has something different to it. And Rapture has a really dark history, and going through and finding the audio logs and learning Rapture's dark history and how it got to where it was now is a very interesting story, and I found all the world building and just the storytelling very intriguing. The main story itself, I have a few things about. At some point, I'm going to do a big Bioshock like spoiler talk, so I won't be talking spoilers here. This will be spoiler-free for right now. But as for the main story of Bioshock, at one point you have this huge twist in the whole story and it's one of the greatest twists in gaming history. You don't see it coming and it totally makes sense and it's a really clever twist. But I feel like right after that twist you hit this like major high of like, oh my gosh! And then after that I feel like it tanks pretty hard. This story doesn't do a very good job of wrapping up and the gameplay itself also doesn't really wrap up. So this whole experience has been like this really awesome escalation. I actually think it probably starts like up here and then it like kind of slowly goes down and then it dips and then it goes back up and you hit that uh, part with the twist and it just is really big and awesome and then I feel like it just slowly keeps going back down and it never goes back up again. It was a big bummer because this game did a fantastic job of the setup. Everything was so incredible. The story, the characters, everything was great up until about that twist and then it just tanks really hard and never recovers. It makes it so that once you hit that twist I almost don't even feel an incentive to play anymore. I just was like eh, it doesn't really go anywhere after that. It doesn't do anything more interesting. It kind of just wraps up the story because like oh we did this cool Cool twist but now that doesn't really wrap up the story that just leaves more story and then they kind of had to figure out something to do with that and then they're just like ah we'll just do this and then it's over it, it just it doesn't really land as well as I wanted it to like it starts out so great and it does a really good job for the first several hours and like I said it kind of dips a little bit but then it really comes back swinging with that twist and it's fantastic it just this landing is not what I was really wanting or hoping it to be like I said it doesn't ruin the experience just the last few hours of this game are definitely not nearly as exciting as the first three fourths or two acts of the game throughout the game you're gonna meet several characters that are kind of left over from the pieces of rapture and each of them has a really interesting part and story of the fall of rapture and I really enjoyed meeting these characters and seeing their stories and also the voice acting is incredible I mean the main one of the main characters Atlas his voice actor does a fantastic job he's got this like awesome happy-go-lucky Irish dude and he's like you'll never get my lucky charms and you know just like super awesome voice acting all over the place they all do a really great job and even like the um, audio logs you pick up, they did a really good job of just really getting you into the story and investing you in the world. 
fantastic world building, fantastic storytelling. Just that landing crash is really hard, and that's kind of my thoughts on the story. Now for the gameplay. So this is, we're going to talk a little bit more about the world. So in the world of Rapture, they found ways to genetically modify the human body to kind of give you superpowers. And how they do that is these things called plasmids. And throughout the game, you're going to find different plasmids that you can use to your advantage. Right off the bat, they give you an electric plasmid that lets you shoot lightning from your hand. And it's awesome. They did a really great job with these plasmids as they have, I would say, generic gunplay. But you get guns and different weapons throughout the game. And you have to use the kind of a dynamic split between the plasmids and the weapons to your advantage to defeat different enemies and as you progress further along you're gonna get weapon upgrades different plasmids to use to your advantage and it was a really great gameplay loop as just using your plasmids and your weapons uh, in team as like a tag team it works really great and adds for some really interesting gameplay the gunplay itself is fine it does a really good job I definitely feel it's a little bit more tighter than I want it to be but you can usually fix that with fixing the sensitivity once you adjust the sensitivity to kind of a level you like I feel like it flows a little bit better but I really love just the fluidity of the combat once you really got it to that sweet spot once you kind of got used to it's a little bit slower but it's not like super slow but being able to like switch between plasmids and weapons in one button push was really convenient you can like select different plasmids and things like that and it's a really great system that does a great job of blending together the unique plasmids and the fun guns that you find and to unlock more plasmids and get different things throughout the world, you have to get something called Atom and <laughs> more world building for you. The, the plasmids and the Atom kind of work coincide. You got to have Atom to use plasmids, something like that. But as you go through the world, you need to collect Atom so that you can use Atom to unlock new plasmids or more upgrades, upgrade your health, get new uh, abilities, tonics, things like that that can help improve your gameplay. And to do so, you have to defeat something called the Big Daddies and do something else with these things called Little Sisters. So let's talk about that. So in the world of Rapture, they decided they're like, hey, let's get little girls and basically combine them with sea slugs that have Adam. And the little girl's job is to collect Adam. But a little girl roaming around with a bunch of people who are looking for Adam, they need some protection. So they have these things called Big Daddies. And what they basically are, the Big Daddies are just dudes who are like genetically melded together with like a diving suit. And they're big and they're awesome and really, really intimidating. And so the Big Daddies protect the little sisters while the little sisters collect Adam. And at one point in the game, it's going to give you an option. Do you want to kill the little girls and get more Adam? Or do you want to save them, get a little bit less Adam, but a little bit more rewards? And also can lead to a better ending at the end of the game. So you got to kind of pick and choose what you want but first you got to take out the big daddy which puts your skills to the test and i really loved the big daddy fights as they were very very intense you had to be super in the moment and use all of your abilities to the best that you could all in all that really covers most of the gameplay it's just exploring this world uh, defeating enemies, finding big daddies, getting at them, just really making your way through this really awesome world. And the gameplay was really, really interesting at first. I love the dynamic between the guns and the atom, or the plasmids, and fighting the big daddies was really intense and really scary, and you had to really be prepared, use all of your resources as the best of your ability. And it sticks really good. This game's gameplay loop is really entertaining, and I still had fun with it at the end of the game, and I really enjoyed it. My biggest probably gameplay thing, though, is that the boss fight at the very, very end of the game is pretty lame. I did not really like the last boss fight. I really didn't like the end of this game. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the end of this game. It just really crashed super hard and the gameplay kind of follows along with the story there. It just, the final boss really doesn't use the gameplay to its full advantage. I feel like the big daddy fights are more intense and more awesome than the fight with the final boss. And so it just was a bummer that a lot of this game crashed really hard at the end there, especially with the story and the final boss. It just, so graphically and technically, I played this game on the PS4 remasters and the Bioshock collection, and it looks and runs really good. Uh, graphically, the world looks just as awesome. It's super dark, super spooky, and really interesting. We're running around, the water effects look really nice, the plasmids all like look really cool, they each have their own effects, things like that. It all looks really good. Technically, I had a few issues. The biggest thing is sometimes the frame rate would kind of slow down a little bit once a lot of action was happening on the scene. And then the biggest one that really killed me is the crashes or freezes. I had this game crash or freeze several times, and it sucks because it runs on a manual save system. So you got to be saving all the time to keep up with the crashes and freezes. I remember playing this game kind of when it first came out on the collection, and I was at, I was going to the final boss, and it crashed, and I hadn't saved in hours, and I just never picked it up again because I was so just annoyed. But this time, I felt like it was a little bit better. They recently put out a patch with the kind of the Switch version, kind of updated some things, and I feel like it runs better. It does a better job of keeping that frame rate in check. It still has frame rate issues. It froze once or twice for me. 
It was a bummer. I had to reload my save. So save constantly so you don't have to worry about these technical issues. So there was one last thing before I go. I totally forgot about this. I don't know how because this ends up being like most of the game, but it was the most fun part of the game. When you're going around the world of Rapture, you find vending machines or machines that you can hack and use to your advantage. You can get better prices at vending machines or... Uh, take security robots or turrets and make them fight for your side. And to hack these things, you have to play probably one of the funnest mini games ever. I love this thing. It was so fun. So it's a little tube puzzle and like some water comes through these tubes and you have to like rearrange them and get it to like from one point to the other on this grid system. It was so fun and so entertaining. You're doing this thing the entire part of the game. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It was seriously one of my favorite parts of this game and I was so glad that it popped up so often. They kept it new and fresh and they made it more difficult the further you get into the game. So you have to like adapt to it and actually get really good at this puzzle stuff. It was really fun and it was seriously one of my favorite parts of this whole game. I can't even believe I forgot about it so in the end Bioshock's story starts out really great and it has a fantastic twist like I said probably one of the greatest twists in gaming history this twist comes out of nowhere it makes sense and it fits and it's just very mind-blowing and very fun this game has a lot of like commentary on life and things like that and it's very interesting really makes you think and the story was really fun I was thinking a lot about like the imagery and the similar uh, similes and metaphors that it does it does a great job of just kind of making you think about life and it's very cool but this game crashes so hard at the end with the gameplay just kind of eh, wearing off on me the story just doesn't know what to do after the twist and it crashes pretty hard doesn't ruin the experience but i'd honestly say play up to like the part with the twist and then just kind of call it good from there you don't really need to play anymore you got your experience and it was really rad but you got to see kind of a conclusion you know but <laughs> It's hard, it's tricky, I know, but just, it crashes so hard for me, it's hard to recommend playing this one to the end. If it's your first time playing through, play it to the end, but if you're replaying it, play to that twist part and then kind of call it good. I don't really see a reason to keep going. But, this game does a fantastic job of building a really amazing world, it has really interesting gameplay with a really fluid system between your plasmids and your weapons, really good, really entertaining, the graphics are great, the tube puzzle for hacking is seriously one of the funnest parts of this game. I loved it. The crashes and freezes were really annoying and really crushed a lot of my mental spirit to want to keep playing. So save often and make sure you reload those saves if you die because it sucks if you have to go back like two hours of gameplay because you didn't save. But in the end, Bioshock is a really great experience. It just came out on the Switch for like 20 or 30 bucks. It's a great price if you've never played this game before. It's probably a great way to pick it up. But I'd say probably the best way to play this game, sit down, put in some headphones, and get super invested in the world because the world building is just fantastic. They kill it with the world building. Rapture is such an interesting place, and I cannot wait to revisit again in Bioshock 2. So, would I recommend Bioshock? Absolutely. If you like kind of survival horror, this one's a very light survival horror. There are some horror-ish sections, but the survival elements are there. You got to really watch your ammo and your health packs and your plasmids and stuff like that. You got to keep an eye on that. And then also, um, if you like really awesome storytelling, you'd really like this game. If you like really cool world building, really awesome action shooters, this game's for you. You really enjoy it. So yeah, I would highly recommend you check out Bioshock. Hey, thank you so much for watching my video on Bioshock. I hope you liked this game as much as I did. I really liked it, just really didn't love the ending all that much. So let me know in the comments, what's your favorite plasmid from Bioshock? That's a fun question. What's your favorite plasmid? Personally, I like the bees. The bees was really, really cool. It was really fun. It made me think of Nicolas Cage, and it was just really fun. So... What do you think about Bioshock? Let me know down below. What's your favorite plasma in it? And also, while you're down there, if you want to hit like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video, that would be awesome. And if you want to check out more of my stuff, I'm over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash a game for your thoughts. I'm streaming there all the time. I'd love to see you there. So thank you so much for watching the video. I have plenty more content here, Let's Plays, game reviews, and other awesome gaming content. I post new videos every day every day of the week. It's awesome, and it's great, and I'd love to see you around. So thank you so much for watching the video, and we'll catch you guys next time on Game for Your Thoughts.